2020 has been a bit of an interesting one, eh? Like, it's affected all of us, no matter where you are in the world. But at the start of the year, on the 1st of January, I set myself a New Year's resolution to create and publish and share a YouTube video with you guys every single week. Well, at least 52 videos throughout the year, because I wanted to have started YouTube such a long time ago, and I never made that jump, that leap. I never started until this year. And I feel like I've learned quite a bit. I feel like I've developed a lot. And I'm still not at the end goal I want to be at. That's a long-term goal. But this year, I've learned a lot. In this video, I like to share what I have learned about YouTube, about video creation, with you guys. So to start with, I think the biggest hurdle that'll stop anyone, that stopped me for such a long time, is just not feeling like you're ready, not feeling like you're good enough. So my way to get around this was, I created some videos, I edited them, I uploaded them, and then after maybe a day or an hour, I deleted them. But I went through that process, until I kind of got to the point where I was actually so frustrated about still not fully starting, that I just started leaving the videos online. And this was actually the greatest thing I could have done. While those previous, those original videos are, I look back and feel a pretty rough, I'm so happy I started and I'm so happy I left them online and just owned all my flaws, all my imperfection in my content and the way I presented and the way I talked <laughs> as I started it and developed and learnt from it. Just starting is easily the best and most important factor you can do when wanting to do a YouTube video. How do I introduce something that I plan to be such a turning point in my life? How do I sum it up so short and sweet that it makes sense? Maybe I don't. I think I, I think I just need to start. So like I said, I haven't always been happy with the quality of my videos. I'm still not fully happy with them now, but I've got better, and it's getting better and better. And the biggest way, the biggest easiest way for improving the quality of my content was listening to others, whether it's down in the comments below. Sometimes some of you would leave constructive feedback, say about audio or visual or the light behind me or distracting elements or something you didn't like about my videos. And we're going to cover across dealing with that criticism later on, but another part was also asking people I respected, friends, professionals in the industry that I vaguely knew, asking for their feedback, going, hey man, can you give me some harsh quality feedback on this video? What do you think of, say, just a particular element, don't rip the whole lot to shreds, but how do you feel about the audio, or how do you feel about the light? And taking that feedback on board and making little improvements each week was how I got my videos from what they were to what they are now. And because YouTube is the end goal of what I'm trying to do here, I want to do online content full time for a living, of whatever content I like, you also have to be flexible in a way if you want YouTube to be the full time income. See, I don't know this, I'm not making a full time living from YouTube, but my channel is growing at a rate I'm very happy with by following the flow of YouTube. Whatever videos do well, I'll do more of them. What videos don't do well, I'll do less of them. And letting you, the viewers, the channel, decide which direction the channel will go. So my process for making a video, what do I go through? Well, first of all, the number one is the content slash the story. What is the video going to be about? The idea. I introduce it, I explain it, I have the climax of the video, and then I summarize it up and end the video. And that story, that real simple process, introductory, how you got to that end goal, what the final solution was, a summary and thank you and goodbye, that's my video. That's all I had to work out for the bulk of my videos each week. And that was the, maybe, no, definitely the most important factor. So next up was the script. And this definitely evolved throughout the course of the year. See, initially, I would just sit down and ramble from the heart in a way and talk to the camera and hope I'd have enough good content to edit together to make a presentable video. But the problem with this is, without, without having that structure, that planning to it, is I would miss key points, I would miss key elements, I wouldn't quite get across the full constructed story that I wanted to deliver. So I started writing full, multiple page scripts. And what's tricky about scripts is while you can definitely get all your points across, they are hard to remember. It's hard to remember pages and pages of content. And you try and break it up. I'd sit down in front of the camera, I would read it, I'd talk to the camera without recording over and over until I felt comfortable that I'd remembered it, then I'd hit record, record it a few times, and then repeat for the next stages, and I'd do it in blocks. And it can get exhausting and frustrating as you're kind of not quite doing it perfectly. So for me, the next evolution of script writing was to break it up a little bit. So in my script, atop of each paragraph, I would have either talk to the camera or read from the script. And I'd do exactly that. So I'd sit here and I'd memorize something and I'd say it 
to you. And then with the next stage, I would look down and I would read it. Well, actually, I'd try and hold the paper up because I want the audio to sound exactly the same. And then I'd memorize the next bit and say it to the camera. And this, this was a little bit easier to do and it still got across exactly what I wanted to say, but it was still tricky. So the final evolution so far was just to do bullet points. Instead of trying to remember and read a whole lot of content, just talking once again from the heart, kind of like how it began, but still that structured bullet points of things I have to cover and I have to get across. And so far this seems to be the easiest. I don't have to spend a day or half a day writing a script. I don't have to remember anything. I just write down my ideas, try and keep it as short as possible, and just once again talk from the heart. Next, onto framing and lighting. So for those of you that have been following since the start of the year, you'll see this shot has not shifted, but hasn't changed too much throughout the year. I've always been sitting in this similar spot, but the, the lens I've used, the light I've used, especially this little blue glow just along the side here, turning off the background lights, I used to have a computer screen back there, especially with this background, it has changed a lot throughout the course of the year. See, a big thing I was trying to do is create separation from the background to my face. I want you to look just at me. And when the background was lit up because it is that wooden reddy brown color, because it was a similar, similar color to my skin, my face would fight with it. So it just had to get darker and duller and this blue light came in just to, to create that little bit of a color separation from the background to make my face stand out more. And this light here is one big giant octobox, which I'll, I'll get a shot of to show you from behind. But this is huge, I've had this from the start, and this has actually made a big, big difference. Sound and audio. Now this has been an interesting one that definitely took a lot of time to work on. See, initially, I'd just have this Rode mic here, and I'd have it on a stand kind of just out of shot, like about there. Also on the subject of getting optimal sharpness, so on this lens, which is the 10 to 24, I never shoot at 10 and I never shoot at 24. And that was as close as I could get it. I just ran a cord from the back into the camera, but it doesn't sound phenomenal. It doesn't sound as good as the mic I'm using now. But the problem with this mic and the mic I upgraded to is this mic sucks outside. There are leaks from the back that let a lot of wind in. This one here is far better from outside, um, it has a much better sock, but it doesn't have the wind leak at the back like this one here does. So for outdoor recording, this is okay, but neither of them sound as full and as rich as the mic I'm using now. So upgrading in good audio gear definitely made a huge difference. So instead of also having it on a little stand just out of the shot there, which was limited to how close I could get it to me. See, because the shot is so wide, but there's not much space at the top here, having the mic shifted to above, it's right there, let me get it far closer to my face, to my mouth, and still give me room to move to do these hand gestures. And no matter which way I look and talk, it's still pointing at me. When, when the mic was over to the side, if I looked this way, it got quieter and louder if I pointed at it. So flaws to having it to the side and getting a little boom arm, running it over to it's just out of shot there, and then running a cable back to the camera has made a huge difference. B-roll. So this is actually a pretty big one. So a big flaw, the easiest way to create a YouTube content, I guess, is to sit down and to talk to camera very much like this video is. But it's a lot of FaceTime. It's a lot of me and it can get a little bit boring. It's a little bit boring for me to edit and it's a little bit boring for you to watch later on. So the best way to overcome this is to overlay as nearly as much as your video as possible with shots of other content. It's called B-roll. This is the A shot, the main shot of the video. B-roll is the second shots that you overlay on top to, to fill, to cover up my face for the entirety of the video. Getting better and better at that made a big difference for me. It's, it was enjoyable to do, to actually try and find creative ways to film content, to cover up my face all the time, has been a, a nice step forward and something I'm constantly trying to improve and work on. However, I don't want to remove my face from it completely. My personality, me, is part of this channel and I want you guys to feel that you can talk to me and so many of you do. I appreciate all the comments. So you've got to have that little bit of a balance, but you can definitely, and it's so very easy to, have too much face time in your video. But it hasn't all been easy sailing. There have definitely been some things about this year that have been tricky to overcome and deal with. And the number one is quite a personal one, but it's very popular, very common, is gas. Gear acquisition syndrome. Convincing yourself you can't do something, can't create something, unless you have the spend the money to get the certain amount of gear you need to create it done. And there are some things I would call necessary that are required that I definitely don't regret investing in and other items are just maybe overkill. So for me, the three most important items I reckon you need is a good light, a good mic, 
and the right lens. It doesn't have to be expensive lens, but a lens that is just good for video. Good at autofocusing, can give a relatively shallow back depth of field, blurry background. Those three things for me, I think were very important. The actual body, any other accessories, I think you can get around with, with good ideas. But a good light, a good mic, and a good lens, world of difference. Number two, is rude commenters, getting that harsh feedback online. And so sometimes people would leave comments which I felt were kind-hearted. They were trying to criticize what I was doing, but in a nice way. And those you can deal with, like you, you have that conversation and those people are fine to deal with. Some people are just rude. Some people will insult you personally for what feels like no reason at all. I don't know who some of these people are, but keyboard warriors who live a very sad and lonely life exist and they will comment on your videos but there is a great feature amongst youtube you can go to hide user from channel and this doesn't let that person who has been rude and insulting know anything about it as far as they know you just haven't replied but if they keep going on a rant and keep running you down you and your followers will never know about it you don't need that shit in your life block it out but don't completely close off the people that are just trying to help you can control the negative and the positive and the feedback that comes into your life through YouTube. Find that balance and embrace it. And the final thing that has been tricky and harder to deal with is clickbait. See, I participated in some clickbait. A little while ago, I made a video called Fujifilm's Worst Wide Angle Lens, and it was a review of this lens here, the 18-55. to And it got some bad feedback because of that clickbait title. And I did it to see how far I could push the title of a video to draw extra viewers. And it got criticism for reasons I wasn't expecting. Number one is lots of people didn't consider this a wide angle lens, that's okay. Lots of people didn't think this is the worst lens Fujifilm make, and that's okay, I would agree with that as well. But my title was, we didn't align on our views is where it came to. So I had to spend a lot of time explaining to people who didn't even watch the video but felt the need to comment on it and run me down about why I thought this was a wide angle lens and why I thought it was the worst wide angle lens. And it was a lot of work, it was exhausting. It was hours and hours of replying to people, giving reasons for why I gave that title and I converted them into subscribers. I'm sure many of you came along because of that video. And it was hard work too much hard work to be honest like it required a lot and I think I would have maybe been better off not doing such a clickbait title and while it worked I got a lot of subscribers from that like I said the hard work it was required to do wasn't easy I would have been much better off to go is this Fujifilm's worst wide angle lens but to summarize my whole first year of YouTube up I thought I would end it with a few different stats Currently, at the time of recording this video, I have 4,682 subscribers. In the last 365 days, I have 209,000 views on my channel, which equated to 830,000 view minutes. I think that's roughly a year and a half of content watched in the first year of my channel. And I guess the big one, after one whole year of making videos, which is roughly, we'll say, 30 to 40 hours a week, Except for over COVID, I, there's a period there where I did 30 videos in a row and each one of them, like every single day, was maybe 8 to 10 hours. I have made 616 US dollars. Actually, let's do a little bit of maths on that. So 616 dollars divided by, well, say I spend 25 hours a week creating videos times 52 is 1,300 hours. So divide by 1,300, I've been roughly making, or rounded up, 50 cents an hour to create YouTube content. It doesn't sound good. It's not pretty when you pitch it like that. And you need to be prepared for the income from YouTube to not be pretty. I do it because I love it. The revenue I've generated from other sources because of creating YouTube videos has been helpful. But above anything else, I want to end on the revenue, the 50 cents an hour after a year of doing at least 25 hours a week. I do it because I love it. And if I could give one bit of advice, if you want to do a YouTube channel, if you want to start creating content, make sure you love it and just start. For everyone that has been following along throughout the year, or if you've only just jumped on board, thank you so much for subscribing. Thank you so much for your comments and your support you leave down in the comments below. I appreciate it. I do read every single one of them so far. I wish you all a Merry Christmas. I wish you the best of a new year. Hopefully 2021 is a little bit less pandemic-y than the previous years have been. I love you all to bits. Thank you.